Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NinjaTrader ecosystem webinar room. My name is Chris Dolan, and I work for NinjaTrader in our office in Denver. We have a very special event for you today with Will Busby from Pure Financial Academy. I would like to mention that it is important to understand that there are substantial risks in tra trading commodity futures contracts or foreign currency. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you, and this will depend on your specific circumstance and financial resources. It is possible to lose all the funds deposited with your broker, and you could even incur losses beyond these amounts. You can find a full copy of the CFTC risk disclosure at the following link to the NinjaTrader ecosystem website. Also, please remember that these training webinars are not a solicitation nor recommendation, but simply educational in nature. And this presentation is uh, brought to you by NinjaTrader LLC, which is a technology company responsible for developing and supporting the NinjaTrader trading software. Brokerage-related questions should be directed to the NinjaTrader brokerage team directly. And the phone number for NinjaTrader brokerage is 312-262-1289, and the email is brokeragesales at ninjatrader.com. We are very excited for this unique event in which Will Busby will teach us uh, to distinguish true supply and demand levels using order flow for refined trade entries. Thanks again for your attendance today. And without further ado, it is my pleasure to welcome into the NinjaTrader webinar room, Will Busby. And please take it away, Will. All right, thanks so much, uh, Chris. Certainly do appreciate that. Um, as always, I wanna say thank you to uh, the entire NinjaTrader team. Um, the whole ecosystem really appreciate the uh, the efforts that you guys put in and also uh, always keeping everyone updated with fresh uh, content is is, uh, is always very nice and re refreshing right so so thanks for all that you guys do thank you for everyone in the room today appreciate you guys actually taking the time to be here and hopefully <clears throat> I'll be able to make it um, more than worth your while so uh, as always, I get into these events, right, and I, I have one thing in mind, and then uh, I just always get a little bit more excited about, about live charts and things like that. So I'm going to run through the presentation here that we have, um, and, and you know, some of it, you, if you've been in any of our events before, uh, perhaps you've seen you know, some of it before, uh, no worries there, so we'll get directly out to the charts. And of course, there's some slides that I want to spend a little bit more time on. Uh, today, we want to talk about trading objectively uh, and trying to reduce that subjectivity to the best of our ability. So we'll get out and we'll talk about it. But more importantly, uh, we'll just try to address it and then we'll actually go out into the live markets, right? Okay, so first, let's go ahead and get started with you know who we are in case you don't already know. Uh, Pure Financial Academy, of course. We're an online trading education community dedicated to supply and demand. So that's Supply and demand is, is really thrown around terminology, uh, so we're going to help to, or at least try to help and simplify that uh, to the best of our ability to what, what it means to us, right? Because supply and demand is very um, generalized, okay? Uh, so we've been providing material and software since 2009. A lot of things going on there, guys. So uh, take your time. Go out to our website there. I, I think it might be clickable for you purefinancialacademy.com. If you have any questions, contact us at any time. We're always happy to help uh, in any way that we possibly can. Our, our goal is simply to build a community uh, for traders to give a profound understanding of how the markets truly function. And regardless of that market, uh, whether it be futures, equities, uh, ETF, you know, any market, it could be even options, whatever it is, Ultimately, uh, it's always going to be based on supply and demand. That is to say, price is going to rise when you know there's uh, more willing people interested in buying than selling, and vice versa. Right? All right. So I appreciate you taking the time. I just give you a little bit of spiel about us. Again, I try to move as quickly as possible because I don't want to waste your time. Uh, you know, by all means. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Um, obviously, you guys all know uh, that this is for educational purposes only. Trading does, of course contains substantial risk. It's not for every investor, right? But I certainly hope it's for you. All right, so uh, we gave a little bit about the presentation. So again, let's just kind of skip forward. I'm Again, these are very basic slides in the beginning. Going to go super fast. Uh, before I do that, though, let me see if I can get the chat going over here. Is there anyone in the room that doesn't have any experience with supply and demand? Uh, so when we talk about supply and demand, let's say, for example, we're looking at supply and demand levels or you know, they refer to as supply and demand zones, things like that. Is there anyone in the room that's just utterly 
uh, you know, no experience with that whatsoever. I ask only because that will tell me how quickly I can move through this or, uh, or not. Other platforms, sure. Yeah, and it's okay. I mean, it doesn't really matter. It could be any, you know. I mean, there's a bunch of it out there. You know, every, everyone tends to do it a little bit differently. I think that goes pretty much with any industry, right? But, but yeah, absolutely. No worries, and thank you for that. Okay, good. Okay, Kenneth, no experience. Okay, no worries. All right, so it, let's simplify really quick. So to begin with, supply and demand, it's our belief that masses of order flow control the movement of price. It's kind of what I was talking about just a second ago. And if you think about it, you know, it's always go to these analogies, right? It's just like having a 57 Chevy or, you know, whatever this super sport Mustang or something that people want, right? Um, so the supply and demand works. It's very relatable, just like it would be for that. If you, if you have that car and you want to sell it, obviously you, you really need someone there to buy it. But what happens if 10 people come at you and all of a sudden, you know, they're all there and they're saying, hey, I want to buy your car. Obviously, you know what's going to happen, right? You're going to drive the price up and you're going to say, that's lovely. I'm super happy, but, um, you know, I think we can, whoever's going to give me the most is going to get the car, that type of thing. So same thing. We believe that, you know, it's relatable in all aspects of life, really. So why not the financial markets? I would say, actually, especially the financial markets. So it's the masses of order flow. When we say supply, we're simply saying a, an influx of sellers, demand being an influx of buyers. Okay. So feel free to read through this. Um, but as it's here, you guys, I'm sure you'll be uh, have access to the recording or some of it, and you could probably come back and read through these slides. I'm going to get out on the chart, and the whole presentation will start to sum itself up and uh, make a lot more sense. Okay. So supply and demand, um, generally speaking. With uh, when there's a lot more sellers, price goes down. With a lot more buyers, price goes up. Right. So let's keep that very simple. Here's where we want to focus a little bit of our effort, though. So in order to quantify the actual order flow in itself, we want to understand that there's two types of orders that we actually focus on. Number one being historical. So this is the orders that were placed at a previous time, which have never actually been, uh, you know, executed and/or filled. You may have heard that terminology as well. If I were to go out right now, place a buy limit order below current price, it would literally sit there until price drops to my order. And even when it hits the order, there's no guarantee that I'm going to be filled, especially with a limit order. Other types of orders, we won't get into that. Of course, market orders, things to that extent. But essentially, we're saying limit orders uh, can be placed and therefore left historically because price left the area without actually filling them. Okay, so they, they still remain on the exchange potentially just waiting to be filled. That's not to say all of them do, of course, but some uh, potentially still reside there. Now the second of which is going to be the current orders. This is the, or, uh, excuse me, the orders that are placed as we arrive to the location. So let's say that we have a single location. Uh, in a, my previous hypothetical, I used a buy limit order below. So let's say that same location. We have Lots of historical orders there. We can see that on the price chart. We could utilize support and resistance, supply demand levels, things to that extent, even Fibonacci ratios um, for confluence measures, lots of things that we could actually use to determine that location. But hypothetically, let's say that we've deemed this to be the location in which we want to buy at. What the important thing about this is, especially when we're, when we're talking about real reversals or turning points in the market, it's important to note that we don't just want one because if we have a lot of historical orders but no one's willing to buy there again as we're arriving, most likely you're going to maybe take a pause or, or something, maybe even a bounce, and then eventually go through that level. Having said that, if you have historical orders still sitting there, that is going to be in addition to all of the willing participants that are there or willing to buy there as we arrive at it again. So again, as I said, you kind of take support and resistance, supply demand level, all of these confluence measures, and we really want to just have alignment. Okay, so we want to have, uh, let's say, an uptrend with a demand level, a pullback to the demand level, which we'll look at in just a moment. Uh, that would tell me that, well, because it's a demand level, we would most likely uh, or almost certainly have the historical or some of the historical orders left there. And we would also have new orders or new participants that are willing to buy there again because they can see it very apparent on the price chart. 
So uh, there are a couple things like that we just want to be aware of. Kind of what what are we trading, right? Like if we're analyzing the market, it's not really, in my opinion, enough just to say, well, here's a pattern. Let's trade it. We want to understand that pattern because what I've learned over many years is that even when you have the same pattern, they're still a little different. It's crazy, but I'll show you in momentarily how location is far more, uh, or I would say superior to the pattern in itself. Okay, So we could take a, a decent pattern, but approach it in the right location, and it's going to be 10 times better than an amazing pattern in a, a poor location. So that, I think that will make a lot more sense in a moment as well. Okay, All right. So uh, again, these slides, we'll just kind of skip through to the important ones. This is where we refer to as the historical orders. This is where price previously left an area, therefore leaving potential unfilled orders. As we arrive back to that location, these are the new participants. These are the ones that see that previous supply and or resistance. Uh, and they're saying to themselves, okay, well, you know, we've been rallying for an extensive period of time. I'm looking for a sell opportunity. Where better than... Uh, you know, previous resistance. All right? So what they'll do is become a current seller. All right? So if we're rallying up, we would be looking for sellers. If we're declining down, we would be looking for buyers. Especially for those of you who are new, which I didn't see very many, so you know, I'm, I'm moving a little bit fast. For those of you who are new, though, please don't worry. Uh, when I get out to the charts, you're going to look at it and go, oh, okay, you know, that was just a lot of verbiage that you know, um, we may or may not be necessary. Okay. All right. So by combining them, of course, we end up with a much higher probability scenario, right? Kind of doubling down on what, uh, uh, on what we're looking to do. Again, if we're looking to sell, we really want to see both types of orders. Okay. So I can move forward here a little bit quicker. Um, supply, guys and gals, is obviously always above current price. Demand is below current price. So think of it it's very relatable to support and resistance. Okay, you could even some people call them the same. We don't. There are specific reasons for that, but let's just uh, pretty much everyone knows that resistance is above current price and support is below it, right? Because it's supporting it, it's holding it up, if you will. So supply and demand is very relatable in that regards, meaning supply above and demand below. So when you see a, an exponential drop away from a particular location objectively, we want to understand what actually occurred there. Okay, so logic tells us that the only way to drop away from an area is for more sellers to come in than buyers. So therefore, we would quantify the supply, or I should say the potential supply that's actually there. I say that and I put emphasis on it because it's important to know that we're not always right. Okay, but even if we're right half of the time, so long as our risk to reward and our, our management, risk management is in place, that almost becomes irrelevant. Okay. All right, so let's, let's go ahead. I'm a little bit more excited to get you all out to the live charts. You can look at a chart here, but I think it's always more fun. I'm going to focus in on actual, uh, and actually I'll take it to any market that you guys want, but the live markets are definitely more fun for us. Here you're going to see large drops in price. That's where we would expect large historical selling. Okay. In other words, we would anticipate that there would still be a lot of sellers there. So that gives us the ability to expect the possibility of current sellers. So if we're returning to an area that has a, a, an exponential decline, we really have two things working for us. Number one, there's almost certainly historical orders still left over there, as long as we didn't go back and retest multiple times and remove those orders. So if we have the historical orders and it's apparent on a price chart, right, then you're generally going to run in with the current sellers as well. Now you're just combining them. Okay? So we're doubling our odds. Same thing to the buy side. Okay? We're going to expect for history to repeat itself. I think that's the easiest way to say that. Okay, so a couple of things. You guys should really maybe take a moment, if you're interested in supply and demand, maybe go out on our blog, review some of the videos. You're going to get really in-depth information. We do a lot of free events. We don't hold back. We just kind of you know, bombard you with information and, and uh, hope that it's most advantageous. I would say please go out and do that. You, you can, of course, sign up for our free events as well because that way you'll, you'll be able to actually get in the, the free events. You'll get invites and all of that. 
Uh, and we can take you a lot deeper into the logic of that, but unfortunately we don't really have time uh, in the context of our meeting here today. So let's go ahead and skip forward and get to some of the more important stuff, okay? Because this is all we're going to look at on the price chart in itself. So I apologize, guys, if I uh, you just bear with me. I'm going to skip through this a little bit, uh, like I said. So bear with me. I've been traveling all day, so it's one of those things where you just have to kind of unwind for a moment and and uh, regain your composure. So I found that I was doing that about half an hour before uh, before the session. That's somewhat typical for us. So it's nothing nothing big here, but I always have a good time with you guys. So these are relatively easy. Um, how do we remove subjectivity? How do we make trading objective? Well. Software is one way to do it. Okay, so there's many ways to do it. Obviously, the trading plan or the rule set is number one. That's the utmost important. Even with without that, let's say that that you have this amazing tool, right? And I'm just gonna I'm biased. I'm gonna throw it out there and say, yeah, we all, you know, let's say that you have the PFA zone suite. And a little joke here, right? But of course, I'm biased to it. We spent many years on this in development, and we're very proud of it. But let's say that you have the PFA zone suite. Is that enough, right? So if I have the software, it should do everything for me, right? I mean, it should go out and, and define the levels and, and the order flow and do all the calculations and everything. You're absolutely correct. It does do all of that. But just like a moment ago when I was referencing the patterns and I said that you could take a, you know, a great pattern in a poor location, probably not going to work out so well. And I have found in my experience that is where most traders end up failing because they're looking for a signal of sorts, right? They're looking for a buy signal to jump in and go, um, but they're just, they're missing the most critical component, and that is the location. So if we get that right, all the other things tend to, uh, to fall in line. So how do we do that? Again, we'll look at that on the price chart as well, but one of the, one of the ways is simply to use the PFA zone suite. It is indeed designed to reduce your subjectivity in determining the order flow on a price chart, right? So that's supply and demand that we keep talking about. There are many, many, many things built into this software, and you'll see that as we uh, progress through the slides. But some of the you know, items be price recognition, volume distribution, market volatility, and all of these are built into the calculation. So when we're making a decision in the software, understand that it's not one algorithm doing it. There are a plethora of algorithms because we have a lot of different criteria or data points that we have to put it through, filter if you will, in order to actually provide a, a result. Okay. All right. So what if I'm not a supply and demand trader? Well, hopefully you will be one day. Uh, no, I, I think that you know, supply and demand should be a part of everyone's trading. doesn't mean you have to trade supply and demand zones alone or anything to that extent, but Understanding the critical component there of just the location, even if we took supply and demand and only made it applicable to our you know, analysis ch awareness charts or what have you, meaning our larger time frames, that would still increase your probabilities super, super, super extensively. Okay? And I'll show you that as well. All right. So now we're just going to go through a few of the, again, moving very quickly here because it's better for you to see it in the live markets. But this is the order flow distribution that we were referring to here. Uh, as you can see, in the inside of each and every zone there, we have, uh, think of it as a histogram. But what that actually is is order flow, and that is the historical order flow. So it's a big difference. It's not, it, this is not real-time bid and ask data. We do have that built in as well, but this is not what that is. This is actually historical order flow, and we use that not probably for what many of you would think. We don't actually want to see tons and tons of orders, right? Uh, we actually want to see a location with a lot of orders, but then we want to refine it to where uh, the orders that were not actually executed. Why? Because that's the orders that it should go and, and execute on its arrival. Okay. So again, if we can hit those refined areas, combine it with new orders being placed, we find that that, that really increases the probabilities. Okay. All right, so there's uh, another item is our volume profile ratio. Great tool there, really just defines, this is kind of the buy versus sell, right? You've heard buy versus sell volume. Okay, well, that's what you're getting here. Now, we also do a, a few other calculations uh, to here to give average sell and buy volume as well as the total. So this is predominantly used to simply compare this particular zone to the other zones, right? So I could say, hey, well, how strong or weak is this individual zone compared to, say, all the other zones on the chart? Right? 
things to that extent. And I do see some of the uh, questions coming in. I'm very sorry I am kind of running super fast, especially because of the limited time, but I will circle back. We are going to do Q&A, no problem, guys. I will absolutely get to the questions. I um, want to focus on this really quick. This is just the, the ratio as well as the profile there extended. Uh, Chris, can you guys see my mouse? Can you just let me know if you guys can see my mouse? Or anyone, you can type in a no? Okay. Well, that's all right. I, I wish there was a way to do that, but unfortunately, we don't have the time. So what I'll do is use my crosshairs when we get out to the live charts. And thank you guys very much, by the way, for letting me know. What I want you to focus on your eyes visually here are these areas, the gray, like the really light gray color. All right? And that's what we're looking for. So the gray and the really light gray. What that actually is is our color scheme for potential unfilled orders. And what I want to bring your attention to, again, I really wish I could show the mouse here, but, but if you notice this first uh, decline into the area, notice that it literally turns right inside of that open, uh, we would call that uh, you know, potentially unfilled area, right? So again, look beyond the spikes. We don't want to focus on the spikes. We want to focus on the opposite. We want to focus on the lack of, of, of large spike, right? So the gray and the light gray area. If you notice that first time we come in and test the area, we turn right in the middle almost right into that second uh, area that we come into. So we'll look at the spikes and the unfilled and all of that in a moment. So we kind of bounce away from that and then we return to that level. And if you look down at where we turn again, there is a tiny, tiny little bitty uh, gray or light gray, excuse me, area there. Okay, so that's just literally a uh, a little area down there where for some reason very few orders were able to get filled, but yet right above and right below there were a bunch of orders getting filled. Okay, So for some reason it, it almost, not completely, but it almost gaps over that little area. And that's why these are important, right? Because it skips them. Well, you should not skip things, right? Because all of the order flow in the market is going to get filled eventually. So you just have to go back and grab them. And that's one of the benefits of using the zone sweep. Here you can see other items. We have, of course, value area, highs and lows, points of control, things like that. Um, we can certainly address that more in our free events. I think it would be more advantageous time-wise. Okay. So here you're just uh, seeing, I, you probably can barely see them, but if you notice to the left side of the profile, tiny little numbers in there. Of course, we can expand and contract this on our chart, but that's the literal raw volume uh, information there. Okay, so those are numbers. Again, we can expand those, make those larger and easier to see, but it does give you the actual number as opposed to just the profile in itself. All right, and now we have, this is our uh, user controlled or manually derived. We've had this for so very long. You know, we just continue to enhance a little bit here and there. Um, this is essentially a rectangle that you can draw over any portion of the chart. I believe there's a, a, a couple or a few out there readily available um, now, but uh, few things in ours that can't be found in others. And we can look at that uh, on the live charts as well. But again, what this is, is just think of it as a rectangle. We can literally grab it and move it over any area of the price chart and you'll get the order flow analysis for that specified area. All right. So if we look here, well, I don't know if you guys can see that. Notice right on the screen, you see I just popped up a little circle there. I'm going to do it one more time. There you go. All, what, here's what I want you to do. I'm just trying to grab your eye and I'm just trying to you know, really get you to see what I'm seeing. And this will be good actually. I did this um, and it's good now because I don't have a mouse. So if I do this, and if you notice where price actually turns, right? It goes down and it turns in the area where there was a very small amount of orders filled. So that's what I've been talking about the whole time. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show you with the mouse. So let's just keep going down. Look at the predominant uh, turning points here. Okay? And if we look left, it's ironic how they typically go back to these areas and respect them very, very well. Okay? So again, all, all that we're doing here is going down, looking at the turning points, right? Small rallies away. So if we're moving down, where should we expect the bounce plays? Okay? And notice how we're getting them. Almost all of them are inside of the unexecuted orders. Again, it's very... Uh, it's very interesting behavior of the financial markets. And once you get down the logic, it's, uh, it's very interesting to watch. Okay? 
So I'll just go through that slide there, but I just wanted to give, give you guys kind of a little bit more understanding of what I was referring to, especially without the mouse. All right, so here we have the altitude, which is our perceived value. Some think of it like an equity curve. It is, yes, it can be an equity curve, but it's not, right? So our altitude grid does far more than um, equity curve, right? So I just kind of think of it that way, but we, we refer to this as our altitude grid, always have. It just makes more sense with peaks and valleys. Uh, we try to think of this as just keeping it very simple. Where do we want to be a smart investor? Where do we want to be buying? And where do we want to be selling? If you guys notice that, that picture there probably looks pretty familiar. By the way, all of these charts that I'm using here, this is actual recent data, and I like to do that in the rooms to kind of update the charts. We'll go out and take a look at this in a second. All right, so our market structure, if you notice these, the structure lines drawn on the chart there, notice how clean that is. And the reason is because, again, we're using uh, multiple filtering algorithms so that we're not literally going in and pulling out every swing in the market. This is most beneficial for determining when I'm in a trend versus when I'm in a ranging market. I can't tell you how many times that that's actually helped. We have automated trend lines, one of the most subjective things there is, in my opinion. Fibonacci extension zones, uh, think of this as like a Fibonacci retracement tool, but we just built in uh, you know, some fancy little features there, zones around it, things like that. We do work in zone theory, right? Um, so just logically that, that made more sense. Now what I want to bring your attention to here is just each of the green areas here. This is something that's built into our trade plans, readily accessible to all yearly and lifetime members. Of course they have access to it at any time. And this is part of it, right? This is part of our, our uh, quote unquote trade plan and we require certain percentages of retracements before actually executing positions. We do that because if you're going to buy something and you're going to you know, make expectations obviously that it goes higher. So we need to make sure that price gives us a good discount, right? If we're not waiting for price to return at minimum 30, uh, you know, 30 percent plus, right? 38.2 to be specific. If we're not getting that much of a pullback, then we're not getting that you know, good of a discount. So again, this is, instead of thinking about it as a percentage of pullback, just think about it as a discount. If I walk into a store, am I going to go to the 10% off sale or am I going to go to the 20% off sale or the 30 or 40, you know, you get the picture. It's always the bigger number uh, that we're going to go to, right? If they want to give it to us for free, that's even better. So if we want to go back to the origins of the move, always a good thing, okay? So I'm just going to bring your, uh, I see that I did more than I realized here. Excellent. Okay, we'll skip through that, and we'll go ahead and skip through a few of these additional features here. And let's get out to the charts. Uh, this is just some trade details data. A lot of great, fun features here. This indeed is uh, our custom user interface that we had to build. We built this because there's just so much functionality built into the software uh, that you know we really needed a custom environment to handle all of that. So we actually use um, all custom templates as well. So our PFA Zone suite uh, not only is it capable of utilizing NinjaTrader's wonderful templates, but we have our own. So they're built in as well. And that's just kind of expanding that for you. Let you see how we categorized everything in the left-hand column there. So each of those categories that you can click on, all the settings are going to pop up in that right-hand side there. Very nice and you know just user-friendly, if you will. Okay? You can see there that we have zone buttons. If you click any of our zone, you have a, a essentially a user interface just a bunch of buttons there that pop up, each having its own functionality. There we go. Let's see what I'm referring to there. Okay. Audible alerts. This is a great one. Let me tell you why. So we've always had the issue of, okay, look, we have alerts. We've always had them built in, but what's the problem? Well, you have to utilize uh, calculate on bar close faults because otherwise you would only get the alert on the close of each bar. Well, what if you're on a daily chart, right? I mean, you're pretty much never going to get that. <laughs> you're going to get it at the end of the day. That's a long time. And so what we did was developed a way to get an immediate alert in our software. And that is not CPU intensive. And that was the whole thing, right? Before it was very CPU intensive, uh, but we were able to achieve that. So these alert lines that you're seeing there, if hit, we'll get an immediate alert. And we have, of course, audible. Uh, we have email alerts. Um, and we have the actual lines in themselves. So not only are the alerts built into our lines as a draw tool, but we also have uh, alerts built into the zones in themselves, right? So for example, if a zone is retested or a new zone forms, 
those types of things, you can actually get alerted in real time. Now, this is something big. This is what I want to move into. Simultaneous time frames. What you're looking at here is actually daily and four-hour zones on the same chart, all simultaneous, right? So we don't need to load multiple indicators. We don't need to do any of that. Um, I'm going to show you in a moment why this is probably my favorite thing. All right. We can, of course, utilize the order flow at those levels from, you know, of course, the 60 minute, or excuse me, the four hour, I believe in this case, as well as the daily. We can incorporate all of that information from one, uh, one chart at any time. So it's very extensive, as you can see, but a lot of information going on there. If we look at those two circles I just drew, okay, then we look at where price turns. As you can see, we can refine this stuff very, very accurately. All right. Next, we have order management. So we literally built in order management directly into the zones. We like to do this because, you know, sometimes you want to be able to manipulate your targets or your stops, things to that extent. So we actually have this capability built into every, uh, every single zone, right? So in that user interface or those buttons that I was talking about, if we click the zone, we'll see it, and then we can, uh, we can just literally submit the order directly from the zone, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and kind of skip forward. Uh, we want to talk about our material, but I think if you don't already know, guys, please take a moment. Just kind of go fish around the site. Read the form. Don't just, you know, don't just kind of hear it from us. Read the other, you know, hear from the other people, all of the community. And it's great because if you read through the form, you'll see these guys and gals are amazing. Such camaraderie, and they really go above and beyond to help each other. So this is just the course. I just want to show an image of it. Um, this is what's contained in the yearly and the lifetime memberships. It's very extensive. Um, it takes quite a bit of time to get through. There are, are reviews, quizzes, if you will, that you go through. A lot, a lot, a lot of information there. So um, this is our live trading analysis room. This is what you would have access to if you decide to ever become a part of our company. And also the same thing in the free events as well. This is what you'll be privy to. We'll just go in. We'll, you'll be able to have live Q&A chat, so on and so forth, see our live charts, it works. Okay. And then of course this is where I was referring to the forum. We just have a wonderful group of traders always willing to help each other. Very, very, very cool. Okay, so we're going to circle back to this. This is the the uh, the PFA community slide here. Actually I'll circle back to that. So let's go go ahead and get over to the live charts. How much time do I have here? So we got very limited time. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to focus right here. And I, because of the limited time, I'll tell you guys what. Sign up for the free events. I'll show you in just a moment. And we'll, you know, we'll be happy to put on another free session um, kind of as a follow-up for this. And we'll do nothing but focus on the, uh, the live charts and analyze any market that you want. What I want to help you do, though, really quickly, okay, I'm going to give you some information. I want to go over, this is literally how you know, we focus on the markets. And, I, and this is how we can simplify and be objective about it. I had a really great question the other day in our free event. As a matter of fact, if you, if you decide to sign up, you, you, know, you can view those at any time, even the free sessions. So I had the question because uh, we were talking about, you know, we had ample sell opportunities up here, and we were looking at price as it rallied. I had the great question in the room. They said, what if price breaks that high? Because that's a good inclination that price is going to go higher. Mm, it is, right? But not immediately. Okay, so, so what a lot of traders end up doing is buying a breakout, and what they don't realize they're doing is buying right into manipulation. And not even manipulation, they're just sweeping stops. So if you're up here and you break these structure highs, now I just want to I just want to notate what's happened the past two days, right? So the end of day we started to decline away, followed by a pretty extensive drop. Uh, you know, well, not extensive drop, but I guess on a very small time frame. Point being is that we did not rally through that area. We actually fell away from it. So the great question was, if we break out of the high there, would you be a buyer? My answer was no, absolutely not, because those particular individuals don't realize that they're most likely buying right into larger money selling, okay, at least temporarily. And uh, so no, we would never be a buyer on a big breakout of these structure highs. It's a kind of a big no-no for us. All right. Do be prepared on the S&P, the index markets. We are getting up to an area where we want to be really cautious on the buy side. Okay. Now, as an objective approach, 
I personally, uh, this is the way that we always analyze the markets in the room, we like to focus on the daily chart. I think it's the king of all charts. Why? Because it's not so big that you know no one looks at it, but it's not so small that only the, the, the small retail traders look at it either. It's the real in-between. And it gives a, it's a good barometer of what you know, uh, price is going to do both short and longer term. The simple way to look at that is, is two things. Number one, what's the, it's actually three, but I'm going to focus on two of them. Number one, what's the direction of the market? Okay, I think that's pretty, pretty clear to us now. We want to focus on the direction of the market, and then we want to focus on, am I coming into anything that, that I'm going to butt my head up against? Okay, so I don't, want to, I don't want to hit this area up here. That would be a big no-no. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to conclude with this, because I do see my time went a lot faster than I anticipated before I can get to Q&A. I want to focus on the last two things that's happened. Okay, so this is real-time price, as you guys can see. And as price is in that daily uptrend, okay, so price is moving to the upside on the daily chart, that kind of tells me, well, hey, this is what you want to focus on on the smaller time frame, but you don't want to just go buying at any, any you know, point. So then we utilize the zones and keep it very methodical. Okay. Now, just for disclosure purposes, I did not take this trade because I, I'll explain that. I don't personally trade even with the direction of the market when I'm coming up near, uh, I would just say supply generally, but when I'm coming up to the origin of that huge decline, coming up to supply levels, I, you know, uh, I actually bought the spiders at, at 240. It was in the 240s. So I've been holding that for quite some time now. And that's the way that I prefer to do it. Okay, so in other words, I bought uh, right back here, okay, and just simply held on to it. Now, I, up here, I'm not going to be doing a lot of buying because I think that the sellers may have higher uh, priority up here. That being said, for our active traders, we teach them how to uh, approach the markets more proactively if they desire. So we would focus on that direction and simply wait for our demand to form. When our demand forms in the context of the direction and we pull back to it. That's very important. So you can see from the swing low to up high, we actually pull back well over you know, our desired value there. Okay, So we're coming into demand in the context of a larger uptrend, and we want to keep that very objective. So our buy limit order is literally right into the area, Okay, and then we can just off to the races we go. doesn't mean it's always going to work out, right? So in our free events, what I'll do is take you guys and kind of focus on, uh, there's a lot of information we teach about targets. Um, essentially, we do even in the free events teach you pretty much everything that you would need to know to, uh, uh, to get started with supply and demand analysis. I want to focus on this last in conclusion, because when everyone else was up here you know, thinking, hey, price is breaking higher, we were actually saying hold up just a little bit, right? We want to be more methodical than that. So what we did, okay, what we would do here is wait for this right here. Okay, so when that occurs, you can see this strong drop in price. You can see that there is a zone there. That becomes a selling opportunity simply because we've broken out into larger time frame supply and because now smaller time frame supply has indeed uh, exceeded the recent support and or demand in the market. So that right there is kind of a telltale, hey, short term, this is the area that those unfilled orders exist, and this is where we would be looking to execute that trade. Guys and gals, I'm so sorry this time goes just absolutely too fast. Um, let me do this. Let me just jump right over to Q&A, get all of your questions and answers. Uh, really, really, really wish I had you know, more time, but kind of is what it is, and don't, don't want to keep anyone too late. But objectively, guys and gals, think about it this way. Daily chart direction. So long as I am not butting my head up against a daily supply or demand level dependent on the direction that we're going, we can come to the smaller time frame here, i.e. the 60-minute chart, and simply say, okay, if there's nothing to stop me and we're in an uptrend, I would like to be the buyer, so provide me a demand level, a pullback to said demand level, and then I can resume that direction. And it's so powerful but having the software on the chart doing it for you is uh, you know, very nice, and it does reduce that subjectivity for you. As you can see here, it made that quite easy. Um, and we can look at a plethora of markets, again, any ones that you guys want to in the, the free event. I'll follow up. Let's say we'll do a free event this coming uh, week. All right, let's do some Q&A and, and get these guys and gals out of here. I know, uh, boy, I know I, I get in trouble here if I... <laughs> 
<laughs> if I keep you too long. All right, so let's circle back. To, I'm going to go through the questions here. You guys can go ahead and I'm going to just kind of run through them really quick. Um, learn supply, good deal, good deal. Uh, is support and resistance the same? No, it's not, Gary. Yeah, support and resistance, maybe just in our methodology, support and resistance can actually be traded through multiple times. Um, it can be tested multiple times, any of that, but supply and demand uh, cannot be traded through, right? Otherwise, it's not real supply and demand. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, what time frame are these? BB, that was the daily, and this is the 60 minute. So the things that I wanted to show you guys were how, like if you notice over here, there's two sets of zones here. So just kind of take a gander there. Essentially, you're looking at multiple simultaneous time frames there. So these are daily zones. If I hover my mouse over, that's four hour zones. Hover my mouse over here is default, which would be the daily as well. So here, again, I can toggle any of this on or off at any given time. I can show all the order flow analysis. I didn't even touch the surface of what we can actually do. So. Um, but yeah, that's what that is. Um, can the PFA zones be auto trade? E not quite. Uh, yes and no. Mike, as a matter of fact, that is what we are literally doing as we speak. And uh, been able to automate things that we never even thought possible before. So yeah, it's going to be as close. We're trying to get it as close to manual trading uh, as ever possible before. Yeah. And that's our, again, that's what we're working on now. Should be available, uh, should be available in the near future. Uh, can you apply it to stocks or can it be used with index and futures? Yeah, absolutely, Duane. So uh, any of the above, yeah, it will, it will run on any of them. If you notice down here, we have some currency uh, futures, actually. But yeah, it'll run on the spot market, equities, ETFs, you name it, as long as you have data for it in an integrator platform. Great questions, guys and gals. Um, how do you know the trend is not changing? Alexander, we use a very methodical approach with that. And as, I, as you can see here, you see that, uh, that trend line? That's automated. We didn't draw that, right? So we have a very methodical approach to that, and we can see when the trends are being broken versus when they're not. Yeah. So, uh, so that's how we would, we would analyze it, and that's how we would know. Just by simply looking at they're broken, we call uh, look for conviction, things to that extent. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Kenneth, absolutely. Works for Forex, for sure. Um, is it a time, is there, is there a time frame that supply demand works better? Yeah, you know, the larger the time frames, the better. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so Javier, um, I prefer like daily, to, is, that's my go-to chart, right? And then I love the four hour and the day, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the 60 minute levels. But I would say specifically the daily and the 60. It's just what I've always found to work the best across all markets. Very consistent. Um, how, how long does it take for the average trader to understand your tools and be competent and proficient in executing trades and be profitable? I'm going to answer every part of that question except for the profitable, right, Richard? I, unfortunately, I wish I could, man. I just can't do that. Number one, because I can't guarantee anyone's success. I, oh, breaks my heart. I wish I could, trust me. Um, but as far as, let me circle back. The reason I can't answer that is because you're different than me, right? I'm different than John and John's different than Sally. You get the picture. All of our emotions are very different. You're going to be able to do things that Sally isn't. Sally can do things that I can't, so on and so forth. The emotions are such a huge critical role. So I wish I could, I wish I could answer that, but I can't. But I would let all the other members uh, answer that if you want to jump on the forum for sure. But as far as how long does it take, I generally say, look, take a, take a year, right? And that I don't, it's not going to take you that long to learn the tools and the methodology because we have that exponentially documented, right? I mean, we have full documentation, full course. We have a boot camp that you can gain access to. I'll talk about in a moment. And a lot of information so you can learn it really quick. Putting it to exercise and using it, that's what we do in the daily room. So that's what you, you know, that's what takes a little bit longer. So I always tell people expect a year. All right. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to try to skip ahead as fast as I can. You, no, we don't use level three. Yeah, my profile. Um, the regions, uh, Kenneth, are automatically. Yeah, no, yeah, no, they're they're definitely automatically drawn. Absolutely, no user input required at all. Um, let's see. And I'm just trying to skip. Mark, I'm I'm sorry, man. I wish I could, um, but I, like I said, I promise I'll do that for you in our free sessions. Absolutely, anything you guys want, we can go over on time. No big deal. <laughs> All right. Um, what's happening when zones get trumped? Yeah, like I said, it's just probably m most most of the time it's because of the location. 
most of the time it's going to be simply because of the location. We want to get that right, otherwise the zones mean nothing. All right, uh, there's a conversion, Alexander. There's a conversion algorithm that we use in order to achieve that. Very good question. Um, uh, are the zones leading indicators? Absolutely, 100%. That's exactly what they are. They never lag. In fact, when they're broken, they're removed from the chart and only exist in our historical zones. Everything we do is leading, absolutely. Um, okay, uh, Jody, the unfilled orders, we use that order profile and we look at actually where they've not been. So those really light gray areas that we were looking at, things like that, uh, that's, that's how we would analyze that. Um, and actually, real quick, I'll just show you just the most recent one so you kind of get an understanding of how we do that. So this is the real time one, the one that just happened. And uh, there you go. So you can kind of see, look at that little low area right there, and that's how that that's how we use that. Okay. All right. So let me do this. Let me skip back over. Uh, guys, apologize sincerely. I'm going to skip back over to the slides. And uh, I'm going to leave you guys with this. We would love to have you. I wish I could have given you this amazing, much better educational presentation. I hope that it was advantageous for you. I like to think that they all are. Uh, but again, get over into the free sessions. And um, let me get you guys that link. And uh, if I can do that real quick. Just going to post that in there for you. There you go, guys. Check that out. And as a you know participant in today's session, of course, we're going to give you a whopping discount, right? So if you guys decide that you want to join, you can um, use the Ninja Trader discount code bottom left of your screen. And we don't typically do this, just so you guys know. We're very keen on not doing this, but uh, for for the Ninja Trader ecosystem, there's not much that we won't do. So. For the year, you can get uh, you know $19.99. Typically, you can get it for $15.99, and we will discount even the lifetime membership from $49.99 to $39.99. Okay, that'll be available for the next 48 hours. Contact us with any questions that you have. All right, now that I'm winded, I'm going to turn it back over uh, to you, Chris. Thank you so much for understanding, and, and I really appreciate that. Again, thank you all for your time, and God bless all of you. So special thank you to Will Busby of Pure Financial Academy for the uh, great presentation today. Uh, thank you as well for everyone in attendance. Uh, you will receive uh, via email an on-demand recording of today's event. Uh, so please keep an eye out for that email. NinjaTrader ecosystem is pleased to sponsor these weekly events as a value-adding service for our clients. If you, ha if you see value in these events, we do hope that you'll attend on a regular basis. Uh, we would like to remind you that information uh, provided in this webinar was uh, that of Pure Financial Academy and is not that of NinjaTrader. All information was for educational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Uh, again, we appreciate the time that you spent with us today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you in future webinar events. Happy trading from all of us here at the NinjaTrader ecosystem.